Chapter 7 is on inverses, really inverse functions. Now, an inverse is how we undo something. That word undo is really important. There's different types of inverses. Like a lot of people know about opposites. The opposite is the inverse of addition and subtraction. Addition is the inverse of subtraction. We call it the opposite. And the inverse of multiplication is division and vice versa. We call it the reciprocal. The inverse of squaring is square rooting, and the inverse of square rooting is squaring. And we've even learned in this class about matrix and the inverse matrix. The idea here, though, is all of these things are ways to undo something. So 3 plus 4 gets me 7, and then 7 minus 4 gets me back to 3. So adding and subtracting undoes what I did. I had 3, I added 4, I got 7. From 7, I subtracted 4, I got back to 3. That's an example of an inverse, how to undo what's been done. There are a lot of ways to think about inverses. I'm going to cover four. One way is that two relations are inverses when one relation contains the elements of the other, but they've been switched. So if something has the point AB, the other one has the point BA. For example, A has these points, B has these points. Well, A and B are inverses of each other because 1, 5 became 5, 1, 2, 3 became 3, 2, and negative 1, 6 became 6, negative 1. And this is actually the idea of reflection. So idea number two, another way to think about inverses, is two graphs or any two things are inverse relations if they're reflections over the line y equals x. Now you've probably taken some geometry and you probably learned about how to do reflections, but let's just go ahead and cover that again to be safe. Here is the line y equals x. Take graphs like this. Slope of one passing through the origin. I'm going to take all the points on the line y equals, or on the triangle here, and reflect them. So this is the point 2, 1. The x and y coordinates switch, and I get the point, oops, right here, 1, 2. This is the point negative 2, 3. The x and y coordinates switch, so I get 3, negative 2. And here is the point 1, 4, written kind of funny. So that's going to be the point 4, 1, which is here. I'm going to take those shapes and make a triangle out of them. Those points, I guess, excuse me. And this is now a reflection over the line y equals x. The way you reflect over the line y equals x is you switch the coordinates x and y. And that idea of switching x and y is the major piece of how to actually find inverses. By switching x and y, reflection over the line y equals x. We're going to take the function y equals x squared plus 3 and graph it, and we're going to graph its inverse. So first let's do x squared plus 3. I'm going to plug in numbers negative 2 to 2. Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. This x squared plus 3 is a parabola that's been translated up 3 units. So 2 squared is 4 plus 3 is 7. 1 squared is 1 plus 3 is 4. 0, 3, then 4, then 7. That gets me this parabola right here. And I can kind of draw its curve decently, but not beautifully. This isn't a perfect parabola tool, but it should get the job done. It's doing something kind of like that. Yeah, whatever. Uh, F inverse means I'm going to take the x values and the y values and switch them. So I'm going to go 7, 4, 3, 4, 7. And then negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. These points are all over here. It's another reflection over the line y equals x. It's going to be a parabola. Oh, that's a line. Sweet. Switch x and y to get the reflection to get the inverse. Two more ways here to think about inverse. The, the third way of all these ways is think about inputs and outputs of functions. If f of a gets you b, if you plug in some number to a function that spits out another number, then the inverse of that function if you plug in b, you should get out a. So negative 1 is really, in fact, negative. I should just call it negative. The negative symbol is really the inverse symbol. We think about it like it's negative, but it depends on where it is. If it's here, that's an additive inverse because 3 minus 3 gets you 0. But if it's here, it's a multiplicative inverse because the inverse of 3 times 3 gets you 1. So the negative symbol is really the inverse symbol. We just mostly associate it with positive and negative. But whenever you have this, it means you're doing an inverse. 
So for example, here's f of x equals x squared plus 3. The inverse of f of x, we call this f inverse, f inverse is square root of x minus 3. Well, f of 4 is 19. Plug in a 4 for x squared, you get 16 plus 3 is 19. If I do f inverse of 19, f inverse of 19 is the square root of 19 minus 3, which is the square root of 16, which is 4. f of 4 got us 19. f inverse of 19 got us 4. When this happens, we've undone what we started with. We started with a 4. We plugged it into a machine, into a box. We pulled it out of the box. We got out a 4 when it was all said and done because the middle stuff undid things. And this is really the idea of composition, right? This, this open circle means composition. You're taking g of x and you're plugging it into f of x. Well, if you do f of g of x or g of f of x, if two functions are inverses, they'll spit out what you started with. If f and g are inverses, then the composition of the two gets you your original starting point. So for example, this is g of 2, and g of 2 is negative 2. Then we do f of that. f of negative 2 is negative 2 plus 4. It's 2. We just did f of g of 2 and got out of 2. That means that f and g are inverses. They're inverse functions. I could do it with just um, whole function rules instead of with numbers if I wanted to. So for example, I'm doing um, f of g of x. So I take g of x, which is this. I'm going to start changing colors. Take g of x, which is this, and plug it into f of x, which is this. So it's just this plus 4, right? Because this whole thing went right there. You just end up with x because the negative and the positive undo each other. Now this, this might not be making a ton of sense right now, but let's see it in practice a little bit. We're going to find the inverses of these functions. So here's f of x. I want to find f inverse of x. The way you find the inverse of a function is you switch x and y and solve for y. So right now this is saying y equals 4x minus 5. I'm going to switch the x and y coordinates and then get the y by itself. When we say solve for y, that means isolate the y. I start by adding 5 to both sides. So x plus 5 equals 4y. Then I divide everything by 4. And x plus 5 divided by 4 equals y. That is my inverse function. f inverse of x is x plus 5 divided by 4. Do it again over here. This is going to be x equals 3 fifths y squared minus 4. To find the inverse of this, I first add 4 to both sides. Then I multiply both sides by the reciprocal of 3 fifths, which is 5 thirds. And then I square root both sides. Now the square rooting of both sides actually gives me a plus or minus which causes a bit of a problem that we'll talk about in our next video. It's kind of like we had to make two functions out of this. Our g inverse has two pieces to it, a positive and a negative, root 5 thirds x plus 4. What we do is we just call it half of the function at a time. We make two functions. In this case, it would be like a g inverse and then another g inverse for these two functions, but here is the inverse. To test this, I would plug some number in for x here. Let's do that, and let's plug in a smart number, like 5. I picked 5 because I'll be able to divide by a 5 for a whole number eventually. Whenever you're checking, don't use negative 1, 0, or 1. They can lie to you. 2 is usually a good choice, but if you have fractions, pick the, pick the denominator. If I plug in 5, 5 squared is 25. 25 divided by 5 is 5 times that 3 is 15, minus 4 is 11. So g of 5 got me 11. The hope now is that g of 11 will get me 5. So I'll do, oh, sorry, g inverse. g inverse, not just g, g inverse of 11, and this doesn't look like an 11, but it is an 11 there. What's up with this side of the board? It always goes slow. Well, g inverse of 11, I do 11 plus 4 is 15. 
15 divided by 3 is 5, times 5 is 25. The square root of 25 is 5 again. I don't want the negative 5, I just want the positive 5 actually. So in this case, it's just a positive 1, and it checks out. G inverse of 11 got us 5. Don't forget, whenever you're solving, you're really just basically doing PEMDAS backwards. It's not always that simple, but it's often that simple. You try to get rid of addition or subtraction first, then multiplication or division, and then any exponents, and then parentheses. So to solve this, you know, I think of this as y equals 3 root x minus 2 plus 4. To find the inverse, I'm going to switch x and y. And then I solve for y. So I subtract 4 from both sides. I'm not writing the steps, but I'm saying them. Subtract 4 from both sides. Divide everything by 3. Square both sides. Ignore that little recording thing. Square both sides. So we get x minus 4 divided by 3 squared equals y minus 2. I don't know how to get rid of this, so just ignore it. Then add 2 to both sides. x minus 4 over 3 squared plus 2 equals y. This would be our inverse function. We would call this h inverse of x. Technically, you could square the top and square the bottom and simplify and make this look um, all as one big fraction, like it become x squared minus 8x plus 16 over 9 plus 2. And then I'd get a common denominator, so take that 2 and make it 18 over 9. So it would be x squared minus 8x plus 34 over 9. I'm not too worried about that. Just, just get to this, and we'll be all set. Inverses are kind of like giving and getting presents. Think about how most of your Christmases go, okay? You've got to buy a present for your brother. So you go and you buy it at the store, and then you place it in a box, and then you shut that box, and you put tape on the box to keep it shut, and then you wrap the box, and if you're like me, you wrap it really poorly, and please excuse me, here I go. Oh, I've got to sneeze so bad. Come on, sneeze. No, oh, it's not coming. Okay, you wrap the box. Maybe if you're nice, you put a ribbon around the box, and then you put a bow on the box, then you put a card on the box. That's you giving a present. Let's talk about how your brother goes about getting the present. Come on, sneeze. Oh, I just want to sneeze so bad. Ideally, they read the card first. And then they might take off the bow and the ribbon. Sometimes they might just go straight for the paper. But in general, you've got to go here, then here, then here. You tear the paper, you cut the tape on the box, and you're really annoyed there's tape on the box because it's a layer of things keeping you between what you want and what you have. In, you, you can't get to your present with the tape there. You open the box, you pull the present out of the box, and then you give the right, like, hey, thanks, I love this, this is the best. And then you go to the store and you take it back. Okay, all of these steps are inverses. All this stuff, if you do it backwards, gets you this. We are inverting the process because we're undoing the doing. The doing was the wrapping of the box. The undoing was, or, sorry, the wrapping of the present. The undoing was the claiming of the present. They're inverse processes. Okay, last thing. Let's check to see if these two functions are inverses. There's two ways to do this. There's actually three. You could graph it and see if they are reflections over the line y equals x. One of them is let's just do like f of 3 f of 3 gets us 1. Okay, then g of 1 should get us 3. If g of 1 gets us 3, they're probably inverses. g of 1 doesn't get us 3 because 1 half times th 1 is a half plus 5 is 5.5. These are not inverses. But let's also just identify what the inverse is. Use the second way. The second way is let's just find f inverse. So x equals 2y minus 5. I'm going to add 5 to both sides. Then divide everything by 2. This is what the inverse should be. And this is not this. They are not inverses. That's okay. They just don't undo each other. To recap all this, inverses are how we undo things. Undo, undo, undo. They're reflection over the line y equals x, which means you're constantly switching the x and y coordinates. If f of a equals b, then f inverse of b equals a. And if f and g are inverses, then 
f of g of x equals x. If you compose the two functions, you get up the same thing because one just undid the other. It's a hugely important topic that you've really been using most of your math career. We're just going to get it formalized, these beautiful inverses. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, please like it and subscribe it and share it and do all those good things. Or you can just sit there and be distracted by my spirograph as it goes around and around forever. Just going and going and bouncing and bouncing. See you next time.